The opening chapters of the Bible are the seedbed for the truth found throughout the rest of Scripture. As we study the first 11 chapters of Genesis, we will discover principles that can guide us as we seek to have a new beginning with God. Are you in need of a spiritual reset? Good news. Our God is the God of new beginnings. Let's join Scott Pauley now. Finish this sentence. I am. Now, what would you put after it? I'm a man. I'm a woman. Our day, of course, is a, a day of, of great confusion, identity confusion. Uh, gender, political, doctrinal, family, everything. Such chaos in our world today. What would you put after I am? I am a Christian. I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Only God can say, I am, period. I am that I am. We have to put something after that. And God is not the author of confusion. Satan's work is always one of confusion, of pollution, of corruption. And uh, from the very beginning, from Genesis chapter 3, what was he doing? He was trying to change the way that Eve thought of herself, that Adam would think of himself. Uh, to, to change their identity just a little bit. Why would that be? Scripture tells us that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Satan is a master at identity theft. And so we return today to the garden, to Genesis chapter 3. We've looked at that old serpent, but now look at the little strategy. Look at what happens in, in Eve's mind. And this is very important. It always starts in the mind uh, because before you do something, you think about it. Every sin begins with a seed thought. Listen to Genesis 3, verse 5 and verse 6. Verse 5, Satan says, God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also under her husband with her, and he did eat. So she took the little thought Satan planted in her mind and made it her own. Let me just remind you, every thought that courses through your brain is not your thought. You can make it your thought. But lots of things get suggested to us by the media, uh, by a friend, by the enemy. You've got to guard those thoughts. You've got to guide your thoughts because if you're not careful, uh, those thoughts will lead you astray if they don't line up with God's way. And notice what he did here. He, he questioned God's identity and her identity. Uh, he says, you know, I wonder if God's really good. I think God knows that when you eat of this, your eyes are going to be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Do you hear that, be? He's trying to change what you are. He's not just trying to change something that you do. He's trying to change what you are because only when you are what you ought to be will you do what you ought to do. And when you fail to be what you ought to be, you won't do what you ought to do. Uh, the, the devil is always trying to steal away from us the identity that God gave us because what it does, it removes us from the divine purpose. With Lot, uh, Lot thought that he was all right. He, he had begun to identify with Sodom and Gomorrah. Look how that turned out. Uh, why would they take Daniel once he got to Babylon and change his name uh, to Belshazzar. Why, why change his name? Why, why change his language? They're trying to change his identity, make him fit in. Now, remember when Samson finally forgot his Nazarite vow, just forgot it. What happened? At that moment, he loses strength. He loses power because God's purpose is connected to the identity he has given you. See, when God changes a person's identity, it's to bring you in line with who he created you to become. Abram, high father, becomes Abraham, father of a multitude. A Jacob, schemer, deceiver, becomes Israel, prince with God. A Simon becomes Peter, the rock. Saul becomes Paul. The Lord is, is bringing us in line with his, his identity for us, his purpose for us, who he made us to become. Satan is always trying to steal that away. I remember saying to our children for years, now remember who you are. Uh, remember you're a Christian. Remember you're a member of this family. Remember you represent the Lord and 
and, and our name. Well, I'm going to tell you, all of us re- must remember who we are. Uh, we are not God. God is God. Uh, we don't know everything. God knows everything. And this was the little seed thought that led to the great sin action. Eve saw it. It was pleasant. It was a tree to be desired to make one wise. That was the threshold. That was what put it over the top. And so she takes of the fruit. What should we learn from this? What should we, what should we do? Because identity matters, friends. Who you are in Christ matters. Well, let me give you three thoughts. Number one, if identity matters, first, you better remember who God is. You see, your identity is wrapped up in his identity. Who is he? He's the creator. Who is he? He's the judge. <clears throat> who is he? He's the Savior, the Lord, the Father. Now, that's who he is. You will not be what you ought to be until you remember who God is. You see, this was the subtle thing Satan did. He began to question the goodness of God. Did, did God actually say this? I think God's keeping something from you. When there's confusion over God's truthfulness and when there's confusion over God's goodness, there will be confusion in your life. Uh, friends, you remember God is God and God is good and even God's warnings, even God's knows are in, in his goodness and in his truthfulness. Remember who God is. If identity matters, not only do you need to remember who God is, but secondly, you need to remind yourself who you are. Let me tell you who you are. You are not your own. You belong to him. He made you. He sustains you. As a New Testament believer, uh, he bought and paid for your soul. He's your Savior. He's your Lord. I love what Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, verse number 4. He said, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Friend, your identity must be wrapped up in Christ. Realize who you are in Christ. You're accepted in the beloved. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Your identity, now listen to me carefully, your identity is not in some good thing you do. If your identity starts to be even some good thing, you, you've put your identity in the wrong thing. What happens when that good thing goes away? That place goes away? That job goes away? No, no, your identity is in the goodness of Jesus Christ. Not what you can do, but what he's done for you. Uh, on the reverse of that, your identity as a forgiven sinner, is not in some bad thing you have done. Some people let some sin define their whole life. They live under the guilt and shame of that all of their life. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. And so, if identity matters, you need to remember who God is and remind yourself who you are. And thirdly, you need to rehearse to others who you are in God. Look, the whole world is trying to find themselves or change themselves. This is a time for the Lord's followers to be unashamed, to be identified publicly with Jesus Christ. That's what baptism is initially, but that is also what the whole Christian life is to be. Jesus was not ashamed of you when he died for you on the cross, and you should not be ashamed to be identified with him. The Bible says that the Lord knows them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, 2 Timothy 2.19. If you really are identified with Jesus Christ, live like it. I've often wondered if in this conversation in the garden, Eve had reminded herself who God is and who she was. If she had reminded Satan who God was and who she was. If she had reminded Adam uh, who they were and who God was, if this would have taken place. Friends, you must always speak the truth in your heart and speak the truth with your mouth. Satan is a liar and the father of it. You can't trust him, but you can trust your good God. Identity matters, and our identity is found in our God. No matter where you are or what you've done, you can have a new beginning with the Lord. A great way to experience this new beginning is to have a fresh start in your devotional life. We encourage you to get into God's Word. On our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, you will find a wide variety of devotional plans from which to choose. We hope they're a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us today, and may God help you to enjoy the journey.